Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitching Mommy, and it's Monday, February 27th. We're getting close to the end. <laughs> um, here for my weekly cross-stitching update, I have the end of February to share with you, plus some March plans, at least some of them. Um, so, it should be fun. Let's jump in. I've, I've really enjoyed my stitching this week and <clears throat> what I've been able to get done. So, it hasn't been... Amazing, but it hasn't been bad, so it's been it's been good. We'll start with my temperature Quaker, which I was able to work on yesterday. I think I finished this motif, yeah. <clears throat> this is where I'm at now. 25 count vintage cloth in the color Prim, one over one, full cross. And if you'll see, I got to use my coldest temperature. Woohoo! <laughs> It's been cold here um, for us. These are like, this is a 45, that's 47 as the high. Um, and even like just, just a few days before it was a high of 70, 74. <laughs> so it's been kind of warm um, and then cold again. So it's raining today as well. So we'll probably have a purple color for today also. Um, but yeah, one more little star for February and then I can move over to March next week. Next week, you'll see that. Super fun. We got snow in our town this weekend on, was that Saturday? We got texts from people who live kind of on the edges of the town. We're in a valley. We're apparently at the bottom of the valley and um, didn't get any snow. <laughs> so all my kids were disappointed. My husband was disappointed. We haven't had snow at our house for 12 years. So it's been, we, we missed it. But when we went up to our church yesterday, our church is up on a hill um, and did have snow on Saturday, but ha had since melted by the time we were up there on Sunday morning. But the surrounding mountains were covered in snow. It was beautiful. There was um, green hills <clears throat> below and then white capped mountains. So I'll put a picture in here just cause it's so pretty. So, um, that my husband took. So very fun. It was very beautiful up there. Um, but we didn't get any snow to play with. So that's too bad. Um, my travel piece for this week was my antique shoe collection because I'd finished my, uh, Brooks books advent animals for February. So I'm moving on to this one. And this shoe right here is my February shoe. I think I was still backstitching my January shoe um, when I spoke to you last. So finished January shoes uh, backstitching and then I moved on to start stitching February shoe. I think I said that right. March will be the border around this top shelf. Um, so yeah, the whole border all the way even down here because I have a lot of it started. <clears throat> so that will... We'll see. I'm not sure how long that border will take. It's easy, but it's also a lot of stitching and it's kind of monotonous, which kind of can go slow sometimes for me because I don't like that kind of stitching. But um, I got a decent amount done on this shoe and I still have two more days here to work on it before March starts. So here is where I've gotten to. This is the called for or kit everything 14 count antique white Ada, two strands, full cross, yeah, so I finished all the backstitching on that green boot where I could. I, I couldn't do the bottom because that's where the shelf is going to go. Um, and yeah, started stitching this. I got all the blues done and did that dark, dark tan. It's like a dark orange something. And then there's yellow stripes and a red flower, I guess, with some green leaves. So there's some yellow, pink not red, pink, yellow, pink, and green left to do. And then I'll backstitch that. So I don't know that I'll get that, that finished um, here in February, but I'll keep plugging away at it. The very beginning working on that was tricky because there was a quite a bit of counting involved. So once the, once the first amount, like the first color or two is in, there's it's a little easier, goes faster. Um, but at the beginning, it's a little bit tedious because... 
trying to count and make sure everything's in the right place. Um, I'll save that for plans. I did get some work on flea market flowers, which was nice. And I got um, two times to work on this this week. I ended up working on it while I talked with Desiree um, and my sister. So I'm focusing in on this block, which is the one I had chosen for February, the next tallest block. And I'd like to finish this this year doing a block a month. This is March's block, so I'm not quite done with February, but I'm not worried about getting this done in March. <laughs> so I should be able to finish this one and this one, and I'll either continue on with like borders or work on antique shoe collection if there's any um, phone call stitching at the end of March that when this is all caught up. So that's kind of my plan for that one. <clears throat> So here is where this one is at now. This is 25 count vintage cloth in the color barley, one over one, full cross, all the called for DMC. I, I attempted a fancy floss conversion and it just didn't work because a lot of these, like especially the pinks, there's like five pinks, five or six pinks, and they, they're they a little too similar to do fancy floss because and have them still be distinct, like the different petals and stuff. So I went ahead and just stuck with DMC. And it looks beautiful. So I finished this lighter pink in all of these corners and in the design in the center. And then I came through here with the dark pink, finished these two flowers, started to fill in the center, almost got that done. And then I have more petals here and here. So that should not take too long. So the next time I have a phone call, presumably on Friday, I should be able to get this block finished and maybe even get started on March. So I'm guessing I should have plenty of time to either work on borders or um, flea mark uh, antique shoe collection during the remainder of the month. So I think that I think that's a nice nice plan for that one. So my bonus stitching I worked on three times this week, and I'm really not a good bonus stitcher. Like that little bit, like twenty five seven daily 30, that kind of concept. I'm not good at it. <laughs> My life is just too busy. This is the one I'm doing for that during February since it's full market, full, full coverage February. There we go, all the Fs. Pain-free crafts, snowman with kitten. And I believe this is discontinued. Sarah Summers, I think all of her stuff was discontinued a few months ago, but I am um, stitching the background for my daughter who wants to stitch at least the cat. I'm hoping to talk her into doing the snowman as well, but she's young and not focused on cross stitch quite yet. So at this point, it's yet to be determined. I'm not drawn to this one quite as much as I should be probably. Um, so maybe that's part of the problem of not wanting to pull it out or not feeling like I have time. But I also, with my full coverage bingo that I've been doing, switching my main project every day. I wanna make sure that project gets a decent amount of time because I don't wanna only work on it one day this year and it doesn't get any time because I'm working on this one. Um, so that kind of played into it as well. If my afternoon was full up, but I had a long evening to stitch, I'd usually just work on my, my main piece during the evening. I wouldn't first do a length of thread and then work on my main piece. I'd only do work on this if I had time in the afternoon, um, which doesn't always happen because <laughs> I'm busy. So I did a little bit, I did two lengths of thread. And so there's progress. You can see a little bit more outline of the cat. This is 18 count white Ada, two over one full cross. My daughter's doing the cat, no more progress on her end. And then I did two more lengths of blue. And I'm coming down here. I'll, I'll keep going down this little strip next to the kitty and then there's more in this strip between the cat and the snowman that I'll also do in this color before moving on to the next color. I won't bother going around the snowman with that color quite yet because I, she wants me to focus over here by the cat and get more colors in the background. So, but I, I may not do a whole lot on this anymore. Like it's possible I might get one more today Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but tomorrow I have Bible study and that tends to mean I don't have a lot of evening time, if any. 
So I want to probably, I won't work on this tomorrow for sure, because if I have any afternoon time, I'll want to work on my main piece then because I won't have evening time. So that's kind of how that works. Um, so I may put one more length of thread into that one today, but then after that, I'll have March. I'm going back to my March bonus plans. So full coverage February will be over. <laughs> Don't worry. There's still lots more full coverage to come, but, um, I think that's all the miscellaneous things that I worked on. So I'll insert the clips here of the main pieces that I had throughout the month of, um, throughout this last week of February, finishing out my full coverage bingo board that I was doing, that I was playing along with. So I'll insert those here and then I'll come back and talk about March plans, and quilting that I did a little bit of. So stay tuned. All right, here we are to start a new video. Smokey's in here with me. <laughs> Hello. All right, we're gonna pull my new project for today. There's only a few left. The only one on here that will not give me another bingo, I think is this one. All the rest will give me a bingo of some kind, at least one. Okay, so this one is designed with stormy weather because February 10th is National Umbrella Day. That's fun. So I think the stormy weather, yeah, Norwegian ship under sail, which will give me a bingo right there, <laughs> is the one for that because it does look like it's in rather somewhat stormy weather on the sea. So I'll go get that one and show you where I'm starting it at and be right back. All right, here is my starting point on Norwegian ship under sail. This is 25 count linen, uh, two over one half stitches. And I have come all the way across to find the far side of the piece. I have also found a little bit of the ship here in the middle. I just realized I haven't shown you a cover page. I'm always doing that. So L M N. Here's this one. If you want to see this um, good progress on this, like about this much of it is finished. Um, needle, is it needle craft underscore Danny here on floss tube? She's working on this. It's looking really good. So go ahead over there and look at her channel if you want to see more of this. But this is how far I'm at. I have some columns done over here and was working across here. And I think I just hop, skipped, and jumped. Um, across here to get to the other side and I'll probably come back here and like fill in these symbols um, just to keep going with the method that I like to do so yeah let's see how far I can get today um, as always it might be a little bit busy um, but possibly could get some good stitching time so we will see talk to you later okay here we are this is now Tuesday um, February 21st, and this is how far I got on Norwegian ship under sail. It's a whole lot paler in person, and I was realizing when I was making my, um, I think I was filming in my chair, uh, on the chair downstairs last week, and even doing my update videos, just the, the lighting right here is not great. <laughs> when I lay it down like this, even like that, you can see it's lighter. You have to put my hand there. Anyways, very interesting what cameras will do. Anyways, I stitched, let's see, 300. I wrote it down. It's just not right. Uh, 487 stitches on this, all kind of in this area. Um, I was finishing up these 10 by 10 blocks right up here, and there was a few colors. Stitched maybe three or four colors and full strings. So it came down here and filled some things in, came, came along here with some of it. So yeah, pretty happy with that. They're all half stitches, so went pretty quick. Let's see what I have on the docket today. Only five left. So let's see what we're going to do today. Design with something pink because of Valentine's Day. So what did I pick for pink? end of the ball and this one was a little bit it counts technically but um not super pink but yeah there's some pink her dress is kind of pink 
she's got, you know, there's some pink flowers. I guess her dress is fairly pink. So anyways, I'm stitching up here in the background and I think I have a little bit of their heads started so you can locate them. Um, I will not be stitching pink right now. <laughs> Mostly browns probably, but um, this design does have pink on it. So I'll go get my whip and show you where I'm starting from. All right, so here is my start on end of the ball and I even have a matching needle minder, <laughs> so fun. So yeah, see, I've, I've done a good amount of background. This is 24 count Congress cloth in ivory, I believe. It's, it's like a tan color, even though it says ivory. Um, two over one half stitches. Congress cloth is very stiff. Um, it's used for needlepoint and counted canvas. Um, but I had a, a tip on a golden kite forum years ago that this is good for half stitch projects because it doesn't warp as much as fabric. So I thought I'd give it a whirl. And I have a couple things on this. I think La Soiree is on this too. And I enjoy it. So yeah, you can see the outline of his face a little bit, and her head is over here somewhere. Um, so yeah, her hair, I think her hair is right here, and her face will be this way, um, to remind you of what she's looking like there. So yeah, so this is my starting point. Most likely, I will, again, be boring and work here in the background. Looks like the 10 by 10 squares are filled in all the way through this point, so I'll just do that. Um, here, when I'm only working on things for one day, it makes it pretty easy to uh, get progress by working in the background. So, um, does that show the color better? <laughs> if something happens to also be down here, of course, I'll fill it in in their face area, but I don't expect to do much down there. I'll probably just work in the background. So we will see um, how far I get to on this today. Talk to you later. All right, here we are, Wednesday, February 22nd, 2023. This is how far I got on end of the ball. I got farther than I even expected. Um, 703 stitches, I think, which is really fun. Um, like I planned, I came up here and finished out some 10 by 10 squares until about here. This is still within that 10 by 10 area. Um, some of it even came back down here in the man's face and kind of outlined the edge of her face too, which is cool. So yeah. There was a couple stitch, a couple colors up here where there are only a handful of stitches, but since they, I used up my string in the faces, um, it worked out. So pretty fun. Um, yeah, so happy with what I got done on that one. Let's pick my project for today. Only four left. Let's see. Design with a person of color, African American History Month. Woohoo! <clears throat> I've been waiting for this one all month. <laughs> African Woman with Peonies, because it's the first one in my book. So I've been waiting for this one and I keep seeing it and keep wanting to work on it. So I finally get to. Uh, I started this with Denise over at Black Ribbon Stitch Studio and Colette, the highway stitcher. They were starting it. I'm like, oh, that is really pretty. I think I need to do that too. So <laughs> let's go get my whip and see where I'm gonna work today. All right, here is my starting point on African Woman with Peonies 2. I think there's another one for some reason. Um, this artist, I think, maybe painted two similar pictures. Um, yeah, so I have made it all the way to the to the other side of the design. It's not that large of a piece. Um, Artisy um, has decent sizing, so it's 250 by 196. So yeah, compared to a, a heaven and earth design, this is tiny. So. You could see the, her, the start of her hand and some more, some of these flowers, and this is her head. Um, I think this is shadow of her skin right here, and then this is part of her head, head wrap. Um, this is one I started using my original typewriter method, so you'll see it's filled in all the way across the top. It looks like the first two rows even are finished. This is in the third row, these ones. Um, but I have decided I'd rather do 10 by 10 squares with my uh, typewriter method, especially once I get into it, because it does get hard to find the next square. More time consuming, I guess, than hard. Um, so I'll probably head back here and start filling in 10 by 10 squares. So we'll see more of this background filled in and probably some more flower if I can get that far. So this afternoon and evening will be very busy, running around, picking up kids, taking kids, all the things. So. Hopefully I can squeeze in some minutes here and there and get some nice attention on this one. So 
see you tomorrow. Bye. All right, here we are. This is Thursday, February 23rd. Um, this is how far I got on African Woman with Peonies. Pretty happy with that. That was um, 424, 424 stitches. Um, and on a day when I was kind of in and out all evening and afternoon, um, not too shabby. They are half stitches, so that helps. Um, I filled in, I came back here and was working through the 10 by 10 symbols in the 10 by 10 squares. This is actually 20 deep right here. It's all filled in. Um, and I got more done in the flower, which is fun. And some of those colors ended up over here. Like there, I finished my string in her hat or headscarf. There's some green um, in here in this leaf, which is fun. There's some brown down here and gray in her um, arm and some more of the flowers. So pretty fun. So happy with that. And there's only three left. So what am I gonna work on today? Smallest design because it's the shortest month of the year and that is Visit Endor. My last Visit Endor on this bingo board and then I'll have one more day on the 28th, which I think is Tuesday, um, next Tuesday. Oh, it started raining again. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's fun. I'll go get that and show you the starting point and I'll be right back. All right, so here I am, uh, starting point on Visit Endor and did I work on this this week already? I can't remember. I should probably show you my starting point, huh? Uh, there it is. So, um, I guess the top of this will come in not too far down, right about there probably. So I have some of this light blue on my needle right now, so I'll definitely be filling in more of this at the very least. Hopefully I'll come down here and put in some more of these trees because I'm going to, I'm reverting back to my original loved method of regular half stitches picking symbols um, in the 10 by 10 blocks, <laughs> left to right, top to bottom. So let's see where that gets me today. Talk to you later. All right, here we are on Friday, February 24th. And this is how far I got on Visit Endor. Um, definitely a busier evening than I had expected. Um, but I got 371 half stitches, finished my string right here and then did one whole string um, in the tree down there and that's all I got to. So, um, yeah, I'm glad I got this in at least. I wasn't sure I'd even be able to do more than this, but I was able to have a little bit more time and did another length of thread. So this will come out one more time in February and then once every month, hopefully for the rest of the year, except for August. So hope to keep seeing some progress chipping away at this. This is close to, it's like 31% complete, maybe something like that. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's see which of these last two <laughs> I get to work on today. <clears throat> Designs showing two or a pair of something because it's the second month of the year. And that is Stitcher's Retreat, which is um, uh, let's see, it's before that. Come on. There we go. That's this one. It used to be a freebie on the Heaven and Earth Designs website. Um, it's not there anymore. This is an enormous chart for being a freebie. So I have cropped it to be th these dimensions. It's now um, horizontal instead of vertical. <clears throat> and this is my notes. I don't stitch rows one and two or seven and eight and not column one or column eight and nine. Um, this is about the same amount as this, but this is a really a fractional column. So if you're interested in Cropping yours the same way, that's what I did. Um, it's easy to crop pages versus um, anything else, you know. So anyways, this is what I will be stitching. And I'll bring my whip over and show you where I'm at. See what I might think to work on today. All right, here is the starting point of Stitcher's Retreat. And this is on 28 count Rose Monaco. Um, yeah, there's the pink. Hi, kitty. Yeah, Smokey came in with me this time. You'll see some frogging bits here and here. It's the 
um, it's the, you know, the fuzzes from where I frogged. This use, this was my starting point. I had part of a page done when I was doing the entire thing. And then I decided to crop it. Um, so I frogged out the first page because I wasn't going to stitch that at all. Um, and started over. And then this was one area that I just did wrong <laughs> and frogged out. And I believe that's part of a, um, how to unpick stitches, stitch with me video that I have in my, on my channel, if you're ever interested in that. So I'm pretty sure everything here that is stitched is correct. I was thinking at first when I restarted to do extreme cross country. So that's why there's a lot of this, um, dark brown and I was starting to do it here and it's just too spread out, um, in this piece. So at some point I, you know, filled in some, I think I did this after I did these two dark patches just to make sure the counting was right. This is like some of the light on the lamp. I have some of her dress and face done. And then at some point I came up here <laughs> and we sort of started to fill in the background. Um, honestly, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, this time it could be fun to maybe fill in some, some of the, the ladies some more. Um, but there's a lot of background. So honestly, I don't know what I'm going to do. So stay tuned and <laughs> you'll see what I end up doing. All right, here we are. This is Saturday, February 25th, I guess. The last day of my full coverage bingo. It's a little later in the afternoon because um, I kind of got distracted. This is how far I got on Stitcher's Retreat yesterday. Um, I couldn't help myself and I just wanted to go ahead and do like typewriter method up here, but the, the there was only a few stitches kind of scattered through here that only had a few stitches here. There were like five here or two here or whatever. So I finished out threads in the girls. So I kind of got the best of both worlds. I finished out some kind of like seven by 10. They were, sh they're shorter because I cut a page off on top. It wasn't exactly a 10 by 10 grid above that. Um, that makes any sense. So this is where the, the actual 10 by 10 grid falls on the pattern, even though it's not 10 stitches high. Anyways, um, I got some brown in her hair, a little bit around here too, I think. And then over here, I got some greens, uh, some blues, two different blues ended up over here. So overall, not a lot. I think it was like, I forgot to write it down, 240 something stitches. Um, so not a ton, but I still enjoyed that. And this will come back out at some point. <laughs> Today, though, we have the last draw, which I know what it is. I've already brought it up here. This is a design with birds for National Bird Feeding Month. So that is my mini bird song, and this I did yesterday with this one, so that means I have a blackout, <laughs> assuming I can get at least 100 stitches on this one. So here's mini bird song by Tatiana Fedrova. It's a heaven and earth design. And I have blown this up as well. Um, so that's what this one looks like. And it is a smaller one. There's a bigger one available. So this is mine. This is small in size, stitch count and in size, because this is 40 count vertical one over one, half cross. And I have some background on my needle, so I'll be filling some of this in as well. Hi, Smokey. All right, let me finish. Thank you. So here's my starting point. Um, it's already 4.30, so um, we'll see what I can get done tonight. And tomorrow I'll be working on, oh goodness, that's not very helpful. <laughs> uh, tomorrow I'll be working on Bear Time Stories and then I'll probably come film a regular video on Monday, so we'll see how that goes. With that, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and happy stitching. Well, here it is, Sunday, February 26th, and this is how far I got on mini bird song. And I believe, let's see, it was 648 stitches. So quite a few, mostly because I filled in this space right here. Um, 
my first length of thread. I had a long length of thread already on my needle and I got like almost 300 stitches <laughs> with one length of thread. I think I had cut it originally to do basket weave and I know basket weave eats thread per real fast and then since I, on my visit indoor, I decided I don't want to do bas basket weave. I decided to go and ahead and just go in rows. And it made a lot of stitches because of that. So, but I also wanted to finish out, well, first I finished my string and it got it to be about eight stitches deep, not a full 10. And I wanted to do something else <laughs> besides just that one color. So I picked symbols here as I continue to cross the 10 by 10 um, row up here. And so there's blues and greens and such that came in around here. And then I went back and finished another um, normal length floss, length of floss for 40 count and did a little bit more. So this is now into like the 11th row perhaps um, down from the top. So that's where I'm at and that was fun to work on. And that's all of my full coverage bingo that I did uh, this month. So that's really fun. Got a blackout. Woohoo! <laughs> and now I'm just going to finish up doing, with February, doing some family pieces. And then I'll share my March plans in my video, hopefully tomorrow. Talk to you later. Bye. All right. So that was fun. I will show you my completed bingo board. I think I showed this in the last clip as well. So it's all finished. Got a blackout. Had at least... 100 stitches for each little square, and that was a lot of fun. <clears throat> Everything I worked on, on that I worked on, it, on this board, with the exception of the family pieces, I may not pull out again this year because I have other full coverage things I'm planning to work on for more, more like focused time, five days in the month, um, which is a little bit sad because I like all of these pieces, but. Um, it's good for the pieces I've chosen to focus on. So there's always a toss up. Um, what I'm able to, there's only so much time in the day and cross stitching is not the most important thing in the world. <laughs> so gotta make some plans, uh, choices there with how I spend my time. So let's talk about plans for uh, travel stitching first. The WIPGO numbers were drawn yesterday by Jesse Marie because it's the 25th yesterday no Saturday I guess Saturday was the 25th so my I, I drew two more advent animals let me get these out okay I took these out so it wouldn't be super crinkly <laughs> <clears throat> but here is the first one that was drawn this was number two on my whip go board Hattie Hedgehog so that'll be the next one I'll start working on starting Wednesday and as my travel stitching so I'll put Antique Shoe Collection away and start working on these again. And then I'll bring that back out <clears throat> um, when these two are done. The other one was the reindeer, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer for the 25th. So that's that's fun. This is my starting point for Hattie Hedgehog. It doesn't look like a hedgehog at all yet, but the color that I chose kind of gave some all over color. And if you'll see, <clears throat> It's the teacup and teapot accents plus the present. And I think her, what is that? I don't know what those dots are. Part of her eyes, I guess. She has some green accents in her eyes, I think. But anyways, yeah. So there's that. That's interesting. It doesn't really look like it in the picture, but it's hard to tell because my picture is again toner save mode. So <clears throat> there's my start. So I'll hopefully get a, get some work on that this coming week. And I'll work on flea market flowers a little bit if I have a call on Friday, which I hope to. Um, I'll go back to starting in March. I'll go back to my letter fairy for my niece, which I need to finish by probably the end of May, beginning of June at the very latest. But um yeah, beginning of June. Um, she graduates from high school. Then next year, I have two more, two nieces graduating from high school next June. So May, June. Um, so I need to get on that right away. <laughs> so even if I finish this before J June, I'm going to just hop right into the next one. 
And I do need to be more proactive with making time for bonus stitching, that little afternoon time that I have to make sure I get these all done. So this is a high priority. That's why um, I'm choosing to do them a little bit every day if I can. So starting again in March, whenever I have a few extra minutes, which is more likely to happen on the weekend than the weekday, but as much as I can, I'll pull this out and work on it. So I'll show you where I'm starting. Because if you haven't seen it in a month. <clears throat> so here she is. I'm doing a slight color conversion. She's wearing blue. I'm doing fancy floss in the leaves and things that are similar, but what I have in stash. And so I have this top bit is pretty much all done. There's some more things of her uh, wings sticking out here, but then the F and all the associated beads. There's some more beads down here. I think I haven't done too. Um, lots more to go <laughs> down here. Um, this is 32 count water lily linen by Witchell. One over two over two full cross. So yeah, I have changed the colors a little bit, but um, other than that, it's called for. Not called for, but I'm not changing the anything in here. It's just slightly different colors. These letters from Nora are charted for crescent colors um, floss, which are now classic color works. Um, so I think you could find most of these, but I don't want to buy a whole bunch of fancy floss when I have lots of uh, lots of fancy floss already. So I look through my stash, find things that A, I already have, or B, go with the color choices that match that niece. So this niece likes blue. So I made the little niece, the little fairy wearing blue instead of green. So things like that, I'll, um, I'll adjust a little bit with each one. And I'm making those for my nieces for their high school graduations. I made mine first. This is my little S here, and I'll do one more S. It's coming year for another niece. And I'll do a second E, because <laughs> I've already done an E. I did an H, an E, and an L, and now I'm doing F. And then this coming year, I'll do another E and, an, and another S. Um, and then I'll have an M, and then a little bit later, I can do my daughters and do an R. So I have all of those planned out for the coming years. Um, yeah, it should be fun. So hopefully I can get um, get some traction on that one. Um, let's see. Let's look at my plans. So March will be the first time this year that I'll actually be able to put into practice my official plan of 10 days on a focus on a finish, non-full coverage piece. Five days on a full coverage, five days on a no background full coverage, and seasonal Sundays, family Mondays. Haven't actually been able to do that. I had the, the amount of days earmarked for those categories in January, but then I played the Bringo game in January where I had those projects plugged into the Bringo board for that many times, and so I was working on them here and there and everywhere. So this will be my first time where it's more concentrated days in a row. So I'm gonna start my first focus, my March focus for a finish piece because it's still technically winter until uh, three more weeks. I'm gonna work on Winter Wonderland Band Sampler by Chatelaine. This is my only Chatelaine. Um, I felt like this would be more fun than the mandala style. That's, you duplicate everything four times. <laughs> rather not do that. So some of them are gorgeous, but I felt like a band sampler made more sense. So I have this one and I also have summer. Um, I don't know if they've made spring and autumn. I would love it if they had, but I, I emailed them way back when um, Martina's daughter first took, took over and I haven't never heard anything. So we'll see if she had designed any uh, thing for spring and fall before she passed or not. So we'll have to wait and see. But I am down here working on the little animals. I've done all of this. So I have um, this, the rest of this scene to finish, plus the fence and like the bottom part. I have 10 days. Maybe I can do it. A lot of these focus for a finish choices are a little bit of a stretch. Oh, 
we'll see. I'm, I don't often work on things in large chunks like this, so I don't know <laughs> if it's possible or not. So I'll give it a good try and see how it goes. Who knows? Um, I have earmarked this for this week, starting on Wednesday through Saturday. Also next week, Tuesday through Saturday, and then one more day, Tuesday the 14th as well, before I switch over to my full coverage piece. So that gives it a full 10 days. Um, there's extra days to play with in March, which is nice. So I will be starting a fancy lady, um, petal fairy for my friend Desiree's birthday, which is here in March. And, um, if I finish Winter Wonderland Band Sampler, I will start petal fairy early. Otherwise I have plans to start her on the like 16th or 17th. So, um... Let's show you my whip. <laughs> you saw the cover. Let's see the actual thing. So here is this, what I have so far. This is 32 count ice blue linen, two over two full cross. And this is what was recommended by European Cross Stitch. And I bought the bead pack from European Cross Stitch and sourced everything else myself because there were only like two silks and some silk lame braid and most of the rest was DMC. So there wasn't a whole lot. I know some of these Chatelaines have a lot of fancy floss. This one didn't have that many. So it was easy to kit up myself. I changed the verse. Um, he gives snow like wool is a part of a part of a Bible verse. Cause it's, I think the original one says, um, my garden is my winter wonderland. And as you can tell from what I just said earlier in the video, we haven't had snow in 12 years. And even when my town did get snow, we still didn't get snow. So my garden will never be my winter wonderland um, very often. <laughs> so I wanted to change that to be more realistic. And then this scene is pretty, all the white in here is silk lame braid. So it does sparkle a little bit. I don't know if you can pick that up. I did put in a date already in this little box. That's when I started it, 2017. So I'm hoping at some point down here at the bottom in the little underneath the fence. I'm going to try to put in the year I finish it, which hopefully will be 2023. That'd be fun. So I can have bookends kind of. So I have the houses done. These two, these trees are done. This birdhouse, I believe is all the way done. There's some birds here. These animals are done. So I think there's more birds and then like more snow and, and then the border stuff starts. So yeah, the, bird, the animals and birds are one over one. Yeah, so that's where I'm starting. Wish me luck. <laughs> we'll see how far I can get. I've only worked on this the last several times I've worked on it. I think when I started, I worked, gave it more time in a row. But for the last couple years, it's only gotten one day here, one day there, um, little chunks. And so I haven't really gotten to sink my teeth in and just run with it. So this should be fun to kind of see if I can get that done because I think it's close enough it's possible. My um, seasonal Sundays for March will be two different seasonal pieces because I'm taking out February and August from my seasonal Sunday plans because I have full coverage February and arbitrary August. Um, I have three sets of seasonal pieces that I want to touch. The months with five Sundays, I'm going to work on my pain-free crafts seasonal montages. Celtic ladies will get a whole month on their own um, on some four Sunday months. And the montages will get the five Sunday months. But the crosses I'll give two Sundays each. You know, they're, they're the only ones that are getting only two Sundays. Everything else will get four or five Sundays. Anyways, I probably confused everyone. <laughs> Sorry. So this is um, Winter Cross. So this will get this coming Sunday, this the 5th and the 12th. So we'll get it two days. Sundays can be good, although now that it's not football season, I have less stitching time on Sunday than I used to because now we have family movie night, um, which takes away some time in the evening. But I usually have a good amount of afternoon time. Um, this coming week, actually... My parents are visiting, which always means lots of games on Sunday. So 
this will be there to, to work on on Sunday and I hope I'll be able to get to it a little bit, but we'll have to wait and see. Maybe they'll want a nap and I can <laughs> stitch during that. Um, so this is a Janlin kit from way back when. You can now find these as at European, uh, not European, everything cross stitch. And I believe also Cooler Design Studio um, has them on their website as well, PDF or print. I have one of these as an everything cross stitch print version, but the um, three of them were the original Janlin kits from way back, way back when. So these are all part, like a little bit started. And these are the, the kit ones of it's city are kit Ada. This is my starting point. This is like a mint green Ada, 14 count. I have a, a few rows of the backstitch letters and then I started it on the holly. All of these I started in the middle and worked up so that it'd be centered nicely. And then now I'm working from the top down, doing everything. And it, when I have more in here, I'll start backstitching as well as I go, because there's a lot of backstitching in these. So we'll see. I, I may not get a whole lot done on this this week because my parents are visiting, but we'll, we'll hope. We'll hope I can get some time on this. Um... And then it'll get some time next the following Sunday as well. And then I'll move to Spring Cross for the last two Sundays in March. Because it'll be spring by then. <laughs> okay. What do I have? Oh, I forgot to show my... So this is actually... I went skipped right over into, into um, March, but I do have couple days here left in February. So I'll show, I'll tell you what I'm doing for that. I forgot to bring, is it Endor? But let's see. So my, I'm working on Bear Time Stories today and yesterday, which is not represented in the, in the clips that I put through because this was um, after the bingo board is over. I went back to these, so I'm going to give Bear Time Stories, two extra days, and Visit Endor will get one extra day. So I did work on this yesterday. So here's what I did yesterday compared to where I was the last time I had a, I had worked on this during the bingo. I can't remember, a couple weeks ago probably. I worked over here, filled all this in. I got 492 stitches, so almost 500 half stitches. This is 40 count brutal, one over one, full cross. And I'm currently color completing with this darkest color. It's, I think, the color with the most stitches. It's 814. And there's a lot more down here. So I'm thinking I might just continue on and fill this whole triangle has a bunch of it. And it might just be easy to do that today to get the most stitches possible on a potentially busy day. So, yeah, I'll work on this today. And then I believe... Um, I did work on Visit Endor this week, so you should have seen that in the, in the clips, um, that I inserted. I forgot to bring it up here, but I will be working on that tomorrow for my last, um, fourth day of that in February. So next week I'll be able to come back and share my before and after for the whole month for all four days combined, which is kind of fun to see. So that's my plan for tomorrow. Um, and then... This coming, oh, I guess I don't need to show you that. I will be working on Simpsons this coming Monday, but I should be able to come back. Oh no, yeah, I'll go ahead and show you because my parents will be leaving Monday. I may not get to film until Tuesday. So let's go ahead and show you this now in case I can't come back until Tuesday. So I will be working on my husband's Simpsons piece, which is this one. It's a chart that I got off of eBay a long time ago and is no longer available. And I recharted it myself, actually, <laughs> to put it into Pattern Keeper. Um, this will be the one day it gets because of Family Mondays. So this is where my starting point on this one. It's 40 count Virto 1 over 1. Half cross, just like my Bear Time stories. And so hopefully I'll get a little bit of time on this on Monday. Next Monday, if I'm not able to um, film yet. So get you the before of that one. Um, yeah, I think I'm just planning on not filming until Tuesday next week because I don't, 
I don't think I'll be able to on Monday. Usually my Monday mornings are still, my parents are still here. So it wouldn't work to film. Um, so that one, like I noticed the last time I worked on that one, is sometimes hard to get time in when my husband's not around to see me working on it because it's still a surprise. So I will work on my fairy, my letter fairy and Simpsons kind of interchangeably on Monday. I'll get as much time as I can on Monday if if it's the afternoon and my husband's working, I'll work on Simpsons. If he's kind of popping in and out in the evening, I'll work on my fairy. So my my blocks of time that are usually reserved for certain things is probably gonna get shuffled a little bit when I work on that one because in order to keep it a secret. So and no he does not watch my videos. He knows I make them but he doesn't watch them so it's still a secret. <laughs> um yeah so I think that's everything for now. Um, cross stitching wise, I did manage to get a little bit of quilting done this week, which is great. I haven't been able to quilt in a few weeks and I probably won't be able to quilt again this weekend because my, my family's visiting. So this is the quilt I'm working on with this a fat quarter shop. Scrappiness is happiness. And they, it's basically a sampler quilt of all the blocks that are found in this book. Scrappiness is happiness. So you can find the, the, um, this like template to put this all together is free I believe on their blog but the you need the book for the specific directions for each block um the one I was planning to do next was the scrappy strings block and that one needs sew-in interfacing and when I went to go pull out a piece of my interfacing I realized I didn't have any <laughs> that was not fusible I had some tiny little scraps left over that were sewn in, but all the rest I had was fusible. So I put it on my shopping list. So next time I'm out, I'll get some sew in interfacing, sew on interfacing, but I had to wait on that one. <clears throat> so I moved along and did two more that were the next ones. So the first one I did was the shortcut star block. And this one was rather fiddly and time consuming. So hopefully the shortcuts made it better than it would have been. <laughs> so I only, I cut these out on Friday. I sewed this one on Saturday and then sewed the other one on Sunday. So here's this one. For being, sorry, Smokey's um, meowing in the hallway, if you can hear her. <laughs> this one was a little bit, um, it was, it was time consuming and trying to make sure all the points matched was, I had to take out a couple seams, but eventually it kind of came together nicely it's not perfect but i think it's nice and i'm happy with it so that one was fun <clears throat> and then i did spare squares block which is that one and this is a small one it was really fast um and that's that one and all the pieces in this one are well mostly different i think i had to double up a little bit on the backgrounds because i don't have like 12 different backgrounds so like there's this one is also a little block and this one and this one, you know, things like that. So, but all the colors are different and it was nice. So I think the, I, the idea behind that one is to use up your little bits and that you have left over, which was perfect because there was a, the one I did recently or the, the last one I did that was really big. This one <clears throat> ended up with a lot of extra pieces that were um, just scrappy. Cause I was like, I cut off a big triangle according to the directions of the pattern and had a remnant, which left a, some squares. So I used a lot of those. I just said, well, just count out eight of those little squares and boom, I had things cut pre already for this one. So this one was really fast and easy. Um, again, like I said, I probably won't be able to work on this this weekend because of a uh, family in town, <clears throat> but hopefully the following weekend I can get back to it and do two blocks a week and kind of try to get caught up again. So that would be nice. I think that's everything. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. Um, yeah. So with that, I will say goodbye and I hope you have a wonderful week. Enjoy the start of March and happy stitching. Bye.